Hi, Peter Charles here folks for Life Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie the brown hen. Now this is the first fly in a series I'm doing on forgotten flies. Uh, these are wet flies that don't get much use anymore, if any use at all. Uh, they're virtually unknown now, and yet they still work, they're still very productive flies. And I've used some of these in my own fishing, and yeah, yeah, they work, they work really well. So uh, let's get into uh, what this video is about and the, these flies. Um, some of you might be familiar with Ray Bergman and his famous book, Trout. Uh, Ray Bergman is featured in the book, Forgotten Flies. And uh, all the flies in that section are tied by Don Bastian of uh, Pennsylvania. And I fished uh, with Don. Uh, my son and I went down and spent a day with him fishing Spring Creek. So it's kind of a, a neat little uh, link there between us and this fly. So uh, let's get started on the fly and see the materials we need to use. We're going to be using a, a trout uh, wet fly hook. Um, this one's a camasan, but you can use a Mustad 3906B or anything equivalent to that. Our thread is a, a 10 aught black. We're going to be using uh, mylar. Um, we're going to use the gold side. The body's peacock hurl. We're going to be using some brown hen for the throat, and our wing is uh, turkey, uh, and we're going to be using a matched set of quills. We take a slip from each side so that when we put them together, they fit properly and they look the same and they're symmetrical. So if you don't have a matched set, you're going to have to go out and get some. So let's get started. We start around the hook point. Now we tie in our tag, bring your thread forward to get it out of the way. Now wind this back to the bend of the hook, bring it forward, keep nice and tight tension on it so it flattens down. Couple of nice tight wraps to hold it. Now we've got some bumps there, but don't worry about it. The body will cover them up. Bring our thread forward. Now we don't want to crowd the eye here because uh, we need room for our throat and our wing. So we'll stop about there. Now we're just going to take. Uh, I would use three strands of peacock curl, and we're going to tie these in from the base because the base has a thicker quill, it's stronger. If you tie in the tip, you're likely to break them off. And we're going to wind back, we're going to go past that bump. There we go. I have a video on doing this. It's about creating a very strong um, body for your uh, peacock curl. Uh, peacock curl is fragile, it breaks easily. In fact, uh, it's quite common to actually break peacock curl when you're trying to tie the body. So by putting in this dubbing loop, we, we do um, give it some extra strength and uh, it will, uh, the fly will last longer. And you actually end up with a bit neater body too. So we'll begin to just wind this on like it's a, a dubbing loop, as if we're dubbing the body. As I say, don't crowd the eye. You can pile it up a little bit if you want to create some additional thickness. Now we're going to tie on our throat. Take our, our brown hand, just pull off a little bit. Straighten it up. Just a little bit to make sure it's not too long. Clean that up. Turn the fly the other way. Now we'll put on our two slips. I've matched them together. And we want this roughly the length of the fly. Now the trick to this is to pull down loosely and then pull up from underneath and it keeps the 
slips from spinning around too much. Might need to put a little adjustment in there. And now we finish the head. And finally a whip finish. A last little head cement. Okay, there we have the brown hen. Quite a simple little fly to tie. Not much complexity to it. Uh, it's a durable little fly when you tie it with that dubbing loop. And um, as I say, it's extremely effective. And uh, just swing it or pulse it in current. And uh, you'll get fish hitting it. Trust me on this one. Cheers.